So I've done one video talking about question and answers that you need to prepare yourself for Excel 2007 test. A lot of these things will also apply to 2010. And I wanted to just add a few more elements. Uh, one was macro. I've already done it in my video 6, but I wanted to add here too. Under view, you'll see the macro options. If you find that it's not there, you can always go to the Office button, Excel options, and then enable the Show Developer tab in the ribbon. So you just put a check mark in the box, and then you click OK. And now you should get the Developer tab. It has the Record Macro options. And also in the Excel options, I wanted to talk about a few more things. One is when you go to save, you'll find that there is an auto recovery option where you can change the Excel settings that says that how much time should it take to do auto recovery. So you can change it to a lesser. And if you ever found that something happened when you lost your file, you can try to go to this location to find an auto recovery file. And another question that you may come across for which you have to go into advanced and scroll down a little and you might get a question asking you how many recent files to show so this is where you have to come to change the settings cancel and some of you may know macros allow you to do a few things and then you can continue to repeat those steps rather than continuously doing it so what I can do is say for example I want to change this word macro this cell into something else. So I start recording a macro. I can give it a name, say font. I can give it a shortcut, control L. You have to be careful, you don't give it a shortcut that is being used for something else like control C is for copy. Click OK. Now it's recording and I can start some options on it. I can make it bold. I can increase the size. Now it will only affect that particular section. I can increase I can put a color on it and anything else I want to do underline italic I can highlight and make it merge and center so I've done all the stuff I'll come back to the developer tab and make sure you hit the stop recording option and you will also see under view if you had started that you will see that in the exam you'll find that the developer tab is already there I'm just going to come to sheet 3 to show you what it does. So say I click here. Now if I choose to run that macro, I can even do it from here, run it, view, and then run it, or developer, macros, and run. So now we see that cell has shifted to what I had recorded. In the exam, you might come across a question where it's asking you to record a macro called phone, and all they want you to do is type in a cell 800- some telephone number. So just remember to follow it and make sure you stop the recording. Uh, this one I'm going to talk about is called data validation, where it's easier if I just show it to you. So what I'll do is say I highlight these cells, and I can put a rule on it saying that in this cell you should only enter certain types of numbers. So I can go to data and then data validation and then data validation. And I can choose to allow say a whole number and then you can choose between or less than or so. So say if I say number should be less than 1000. And you can also decide what kind of a messages they should get and what kind of an error alert they should get. I can just put the error alert and then I can say enter less than 100 or 1000 in this case. I click OK. Now if I click on a cell and I try to type 2000 and I hit enter, I'll get the error message. And if I enter a number less than 1000, it'll be OK. Now if I want it in the same range or more, I can go back to data validation. Extend it. And I can even set a list. And I can then select the list. So to do that, uh, I may have to just type something here. Say A, B, I don't care. 
now I'm just going to highlight a range. Make sure that your source is outside the range. Data validation asking me I should, you want to extend the range I say yes and I this time I want to do a list and the source will be this range. I click OK now in this I get a drop down button. So you might come across a question asking you to do this. Come to sheet 3. I talked about the Excel options, questions and the auto save and the files to show. Now I talked about inserting headers in the previous video that you could go to page layout and you can go to page setup and then header and footer. But you could also go to insert headers and footers and up here the headers are footers and using the header footer tools. So if I wanted to put a page number, the time, I can use this option here. But you might find that the other way may be better. So you can use this footer. The question is usually asking me to put the page number on the footer. So I can do that. Now the page number is added. Okay, I can come back to normal view. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I may have talked about printing titles. I just wanted to talk about it here. You can repeat a row in your printout. So if I click on print titles, I can click on rows to repeat and I can click on say row um, to scroll up. So I, see. so I want to repeat row 1. So all the pages will automatically have the row 1 which could be your headings. If you wanted more than one, you have to highlight all of them. So now it will print four rows on the top. I talked about password protecting your files when you go to save. And while you are saving it, you can go to tools and general options and you can put your password. You could also do your password protection from, I don't try to remember things, under review and there is the protect sheet option. Now the way this will work is if I highlight a bunch of cells, say these, and I right click on it, go to format cells, in the protection option you need to make sure that the locked options are there. Okay. And say under after E to H, I'll right click on it, I go to format cells, and there, I'll remove the locked buttons. I'll click OK. Okay, so A, B, C, D are locked. Now if I go to protect sheet, I can put a password here, just put one, two, three. And you see protect worksheet and contents of locked cells. And I'll click OK. And you can choose what people can do and cannot do. I'll click OK. And I'll click OK. Now if I try to do something here, I get the error message because I'm trying to type something there. But if I do it here, it works and you can unprotect the sheet so that's the way that section works there is also an option to add comment and this is also useful in Microsoft Word so in here I'll click here let me unprotect the sheet okay now if I click here I can add a comment and that message is available for others to see. And then when you point to it, the message comes up. And you can always delete the message. So that's it. I wish you all the best. Let me know. Leave your message and comments. Like the video. And let me know whether your, how well your exams went. Thank you for watching.